Right, so be filled and fill others. So develop resources for the nation that truly satisfies. You must reach a place of fulfillment. You can give in abundance, um, or what you can give in abundance, give it freely. Uh, the more you give, the more you will receive. Your life must touch others, and when it happens, they must feel satisfied. They must be full of energy, peace, uh, the peace of God, etc. People must know that something sovereign is taking place. And you know, when this happens, people start to look for you. You know, when they start to, you know, they'll, they'll seek up conversations with you. And um, because they experience God and His abundance whenever they speak to you. All right, so we can go to the next slide. So in Isaiah ch um, 55, verse 3, it says, Give ear and come to me, hear me, that your soul may live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. I think what is important in the way we position ourselves even in this season as a church and the answers that we need to provide for the nation is that we need to understand that through the blood of Christ, you and I are in an eternal covenant with the living God, with the God of the nations. Amen? So, um, so this means that, and we spoke about this, that Psalm 24 verse 1 says that the Lord, the earth is the Lord's and everything on it, the world and everyone that lives in it. And we need to have that perspective. You see so much, so many times in it, we operate and we say that, you know, we are here and there are so many mountains and so many struggles and so many waves and so many things around us and we don't have the perspective that we can bring in a kingdom mentality and a kingdom perspective for people because we think it's just mountains and it's just circumstances. But when we say that we are a cover in an eternal covenant with the God of the nations and we sit with Him seated in heavenly places, we understand who He is and you know, we operate from that position, it's possible, Orchid, to bring a different perspective in circumstances. Amen? So many times I sit in meetings. In, um, I can't tell you how many times I sit in meetings and I just pray and I say, God, show me what is your kingdom. Show me what is your will. Show me, give me a different perspective so that I can bring in your perspective and your plans because naturally I'm clouded by what I hear and what I see now. But Lord, if I tap into your kingdom and your authority, there's a certain world in your heart. There's something in your heart that needs to manifest right now in this meeting. Show me what it is. And sometimes it's just a little thing that God will show you. And when you act on that and you step forward in faith and you say the words, the next thing will flow and the next thing and the next thing. Sometimes it hasn't even got something to do with a meeting. It has got something to do with a key person. And so you won't say anything in the meeting, but afterwards you'll just go to a person and you build a relationship. And because you do that, there's just a flow. And there's something that, that breaks forth. And so... Um, so we need to understand that we stand in a covenant through the blood of Christ with the God of the nations. I just thought this is, um, you know, I, my, my ear just caught over the television this past couple of days. Um, they speak about the father of the nation. Have you heard that? When they, when they spoke about the life of, of President Nelson Mandela. And in a certain way, he um, did take responsibility like a father, you know, and cared for the nation. But we need to understand as we enter into a new season, we are connected to the Father of the nations, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He wants to birth something new and fresh and continue with the amazing thing that He has started in our country. And we can be part of that. Amen? We can be part of that. So it says that, uh, it speaks about David. It says that, my faithful love promised to David. And it was so nice when Dr. Jonathan David spoke about this. He said that, and, and, and he spoke about the nations. He said that no colonialization is allowed. In the sense that we act sort of as parasites on the nation. In a harsh way. And just say, this should happen and that should happen. In a hard way, this and that and that and that. But if we look at David... 
and we look at the life of David, we see that he was a shepherd of the nation. He was a shepherd of the nation. And as we speak forth, I pray, my brother and my sister, that you and I will show them that the good shepherd shines through our lives so that they will experience that there's a God that wants to shepherd this nation. There's a God that, that wants to make known His presence as we go and as we walk. And so as people, people interact with you and as people talk to you, position yourself in such a way that they will experience the shepherd of our nation through your presence. Amen? And um, let's trust for God. In, in 1 Chronicles 14 verse 2, let me just quickly read it to you. I didn't read it this morning, but, but I, I feel we should just quickly touch. You don't have to turn there. I'll, I'll quickly turn there. 1 Chronicles 14 verse 2. This is a powerful scripture. One Chronicles fourteen uh, verse two. It says, And David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. It's not about us. It's not about how grand we look, but it's about the people and what God wants to do in the lives of people. So if God starts to use us even as a congregation, for you as an individual in the season, and in a certain way He creates a specific platform, let's always keep that perspective that it's never about us, but it's always about how God wants to use us in the lives of people. Amen. So, um, so we're going to go on to the, to the next point and it says, and a witness to the nations. I forgot the heading there, sorry. So, um, so it says that um, in verse 4, it speaks, it speaks about the faithful love promised to David. And see, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. So, the next thing that we need to understand, and, and I, you know, if you can just jot this down, I haven't put the heading there. But we need to act as a model for the nation. The church needs to act as a model for the nation. You see, people are hungry to see that what we say and what we stand for is for real. It's no use that we just say all these things. They want to see it. They want to experience it. And so as they enter into our presence, and Pastor Cornelius spoke about it some time ago when he spoke about the, uh, the communion, when it says, where Jesus said that this is my body and eat from my body, it also says, there's also a different edge to it. It also says that, you know, we can eat from the body of Christ. And as we eat from the body of Christ, as I engage with Patrick, you thought I forgot your name. I was about to say Patrick. Um, as I eat from Patrick's life and I have fellowship with him, I also get nourished. And with Stefan. And with each one of you, because in the interchange of the body of Christ, as we eat from the body of Christ, we also get fed and get nourished. All right, in the, in the completeness of who Christ is in His body, there's nourishment. So when we say that our nation needs to be fed, we need to provide answers. My brother, my sister, we need to bring people in here. And when they enter here, they need to experience God and they need to be filled refreshed and nourished as they enter here. So eat of the body of Christ. We spoke about Psalm 34 verse 8, which says, taste and see that the Lord is good. The church must be a witness on the ground. The nation must see the practical manifestation of what we say and what we believe. The church become a base that touches the whole region and focus not on self, but on the city, the region, and the nation. And in Jesus' name, may God, through His grace, work it in us in such a way that we can be a channel for His kingdom in that way. Amen. Amen. It goes on and it says, not only a witness to the people, but a leader and commander of the peoples. And you remember that, that sermon that Pastor Cornelius spoke, where he spoke about the four faces of Jesus and the face of the lion, um, 
very clearly depicted in Matthew. Remember that? You remember that? Okay. So, uh, so part of the stature of Christ that needs to stand up in the church is the stature of leadership. And, um, and I believe in this season, the church needs to become a training ground. It needs to become a hothouse where leadership and leadership stature can stand up. So if you can just go to the next slide. So Isaiah 55, verse 4 says, A leader and a commander of the peoples. As church, we need to train leaders that can lead the nation. Key people who can be effective, practically effective. We need to be raised into stature and serve under leadership stature, under leadership. I'm not going to go into detail, but you remember that sermon where we spoke about the line of authority of the kingdom. You remember that? Where Christ is seated in heavenly places and it goes down to the individual that are accurately connected to a church, to a local congregation. And so if we align ourselves accurately with God's structure and with His line of authority, His authority in His kingdom will flow through us if we allow Him. So my question to you tonight is, do you allow God through His body to develop you in the capacity where you need to operate in the body? Do you allow God? If you say yes, my question is, are you under discipleship? Who is discipling you? Are you exposing yourself to training opportunities? Are you developing your, or allowing yourself to be developed into the full stature of Christ so that God can use you in that way? I remember some time ago, a colleague and I had to go to one of the hospitals. A student fell down and it was a serious thing. And, um, you know, we were so frustrated. We were sitting there and they haven't given the, the student pain medication and I had to go to the doctor and ask for pain medication and it was quite a severe situation. At the end we discovered that he broke his pelvic bone and so, so but the service was, we were just so frustrated afterwards. And um, in the wee hours of the morning we were driving back to campus, we spoke about this, he's also a believer and and I just remember that scripture in Proverbs which says that righteousness exalts a nation. Have you read that? Ever read that? Righteousness exalts a nation. And my words to him were that the hope for our country is that the church will lead people to Christ and disciple them accurately so that they can have a certain ethos and a certain way how they conduct their everyday life so that they can be a change in our country. And this is what we speak about. My brother and my sister, they're not going to get it into the, in, in the world. The world speaks about values, etc., etc. But we've got the answer. All right? It's not about what you know, but it's about who you know and tapping from Him. And we've got that. So as a church, we need to bring people in and um, we need to raise leaders up in such a way. That's why I, I just believe that what, what Pastor Cliff is doing with the business school and the way it's growing is really from the heart of God. I can really see it. And, and please pray for that so that God will use that as a, as a mighty endeavor for His kingdom. Amen. So, and then it says that if we stand up and if the church fulfill this function, that, um, just go to the next slide, that, um, that we will get godly access to a nation. In Isaiah 55 verse 5, 55 verse 5, it says, Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has endowed you with splendor. So if you carry what is needed, God will open up the doors. I mean, this is logic. If we position ourselves in such a way that we fill our lives with what is needed in the country and what is needed in the nations, God will open up the doors. But our responsibility is to tap into God and to position ourselves accurately. The only connection that we need is the door of the sheep. Everything you have received must be made available to the people. The community must have access to you. And um, I just believe that as a church, if we position ourselves accurately in such a way, God's going to use the church, God's going to lift the church to a next level in this nation in the season ahead. God wants to do it, my brother, my sister. He wants to do it in your life, and He wants to do it in our congregation and in the church of South Africa. And let's say to people, when people speak to us about these things, let's say 
But the church is the answer. How is the church the answer? No, the church is the answer that we give people experiences, a true experience of a living God that gives them hope. We, the church provides opportunities for true leadership stature to be raised up. That is who the church is. And, and, and let me share to you what we are doing. And then it's an opportunity to share. Amen. Will you do that? So I just want to end off with, um, with a prophecy this, uh, from Dr. Jonathan David about South Africa. And um, we got this prophecy when we, when we walked into the, uh, into the conference in April. Um, it was actually stapled to our program. And I just felt that I'm not going to read everything, but I just felt some aspects I need to, to read and just voice out tonight so that it will form part of our vocabulary when we speak to people about the future of our nation. Amen? So as I read it, just take it in the spirit. If it resonates with your spirit, just say, Amen! Or uh, Yes! Whatever the case may be, or write down some words if you wish to do so. So it starts, he says, The Lord shows me of the breaking down of satanic influences and rule in the South African terrain. The Lord is shattering the strongholds of darkness, corruption, injustice, violence, and the rule of fear. I see in the spirit that Satan cannot keep his management of the territory because there is a sovereign shaking of the terrain in which he is standing. From underneath his feet is emerging a generation of men and women who are the true ra rainbow nation, faces without races. They are locked arm to arm, step by step, taking back the land. Piece after piece is broken from the control, and these pieces are coming together to form a whole new nation. This stronghold will be broken, or this stranglehold will be broken. It will not be a black, white, or colored South Africa it will be a whole new nation. The spirit of apartheid will be broken for good and forever. These Egyptians you see today, you'll never see again. The system of slavery will be completely destroyed. The system of rule of fear, oppression and intimidation will fall by the wayside. Satanic influences on South Africa's destiny will be minimalized. It will become a minority race because the Lord himself will silence the enemy. Satanic forces will not utter the voice in the streets and the media and in their communities. Where he is heard, where God is heard, the enemy will be silenced. A new sound will be heard in the political arena. A call for oneness, a call for true sons of Africa, a call for Africa to arise. The call for death and destruction will be silenced by the overwhelming resonance of excitement, of joy, of the birth of a new nation. South Africa... To the next two years are seasons of prayer and hiding in His presence. The blood of His righteous Son has been shed. No other blood needs to be shed. His life was given for South Africa's redemption. No other life needs to be taken in Jesus' name. The church must arise from a lethargy and connect together and not collide with each other. He is summoning fathers in the land to humble themselves and surrender their self-identity for a corporate dynamics of destiny. He will bring the fathers together with their agenda, but under his kingdom mandate and agenda. South Africa will rise once again and become the cape of God's hope. There will be life and not death. The winds of adversary will give over to the winds of refreshing and restoration. We will see fulfillment of what we have believed. It is only a matter of time now. Wait patiently, wait earnestly. Wait in His presence. When He rises, you will. Amen. 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 So, Father, we just stand before you tonight. Let's just stand. Father, we just stand before you tonight. And with all our hearts, we say, Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done as it is in heaven. Just like that in our nation, in our congregation, and in our lives. Father, every aspect of our lives that has not been accurately aligned with you, Father, we repent tonight, right now, where we are. Father, we repent, we lay it before your cross, and we pray that you will forgive us. But Father, give us the vocabulary out of your word. Give us the will in our spirit, Lord, to push forth with your purposes and with your plans so that your kingdom and your purposes will be ushered in in every aspect of our nation. Father, thank you that you say in your word that the that the plans you've got for us as a nation, that your plans that you've got for us as individuals, as family, as a congregation, 
our plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Lord, to give us a hope and a future in this time ahead. And Father, help us to be with that prophetic voice in this nation that brings hope and peace in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes.